Ontario Archipelago, a project by Joshua Clorn Richardson. Part 1. Cult Canadiana. Your body's just jumping up and down. I began the year with three primary interests. The nature of Canadian identity, contemporary cults, and aquatic architectures. It's just a feeling of peacefulness and stillness. My mind actually stops, and I feel a oneness with the whole universe. Cultish by Amanda Montell and Strange Rites by Tara Isabella Burton played a large role in my initial research on the North American propensity for cult influence centered around contemporary living. In further analyzing commune living, I began to see an overlap with many utopian schemes of the 20th century in the work of Paolo Soleri, Ant Farm, Archigram, and Bodhi Isek, as well as in Canadian Space Age Expo schemes. Moving forward from my initial research, I used sketches to intuitively generate concepts for commune living in Canada. These sketches emphasized both an interaction with the urban realm and the challenges of a wild Canadian landscape. Simultaneously, I was intrigued with the post-war utopian vision of catalog kit homes once popular in the North American Midwest. A 3D collage was created to demonstrate the generation of various suburban typologies while questioning our domestic and social relationship to land and water. Part 2. Toronto the Good Toronto is an expansive Midwestern city of 7 million people. The terrain of the city is mostly flat, with small plateaus and winding river valleys that drain into Lake Ontario. While it can be said that Toronto's impressive waterfront is one of their defining urban features, the city has largely been severed from its coastline due to a series of infrastructural projects throughout the 19th and 20th century. Still, the concentration of the city's neighborhood's activities only furthers the love affair that Torontonians have for their water, and more specifically, their lakes. The chosen site exists adjacent to the recreational landscape of Toronto Island in an area of urban redevelopment called the Portlands. In understanding Toronto, we must begin to understand Canada's history at large. Canada is a country born from its trade routes and interconnected water ecosystems. As the nation began to boom towards the end of the 19th century, our international reputation became one of economic prosperity and optimism that attracted immigration from across the world. But with growth comes challenges. We are a country that is constantly reconciling with our past misdeeds to create a better future. With this in mind, it becomes hard to understand what exactly is Canadian. Their land is very rich, and as you can see, they have lots of fun playing in it. As Canadians, we don't see land as a scarce commodity, but with 80% of our country left unoccupied, it's easy for us to feel that there are no limits to expansion. Toronto alone is projected to swell to a population of approximately 13.1 million by the year 2072. Within its borders, Canada contains 20% of all globally available fresh water. But if water can't be owned, what does it mean when it becomes our landscape of inhabitation? Part 3. Ontario, Archipelago. Beginning my design, I was drawn back to the memory of a childhood PSA. The North American house hippo is found throughout Canada and the eastern United States. They come out at night to search for food, water, and materials for their nests. The favorite foods of the house hippo are chips, raisins, and the crumbs from peanut butter on toast. Through sketch, I was able to imagine and iterate dwellings that would question the relationship that exists between land and water. The first sketch explores the notion of aquatic living, above and below the waterline. The second sketch approaches the structure from an aerial perspective to show the home in relation to the city. These idealistic notions help to generate the first film, oriented around a 1 to 50 physical model of a typical dwelling within my imagined urban commune.
Through a demonstration of various elevations, the dwelling challenges the established canon of domestic architecture in Canada. Each component serves as a mutated typology, from the Potemkin representation of the A-frame to the notion of an American lawn, all the way down to the transfiguration of the bay window, the home questions values of Canadian domesticity and life. Unbound by land, these vessels can easily adapt to their changing environment. After this primary model was established, I began to further interrogate the architectural themes of Canada in tandem with my thesis research. The first model, entitled Fetal Canada, unearths the architectural and infrastructural conventions of Canadian landscapes through the abstract reappropriation of the 1967 Montreal Expo's graphic material. The second model, the Oriel Tower, plays with the popular bay window typology to critique and question the social and cultural message behind our architectures, and satirically fusing glass condominiums, draped gargoyles, antiquated Victorian styles, and tower typologies, this model collapses aesthetic and meaning into an outwardly absurd and overtly Canadian spectacle. The House Hippo model was again recontextualized within the scope of Expo architecture to create the third poster in this triptych. Altogether, the model can be viewed as an architectural response to the questions and provocations of the previous two models to generate a new regionally inspired amalgam of 21st century Canadiana. In advancing the design of the house hippo, I returned to sketch to imagine the interior-exterior relationship of the home. The resulting chambers, organic in form, create distinct pods for living while maintaining a uniform exterior body. The interior skins of the home make use of available space to create highly bespoke and tailored modules made possible via mass production. With this new, updated envelope, I began to sketch into the interior 3D model and section to establish a hierarchy of spaces. These spaces were designed in considering the bare minimum of a future kit home, a one-bedroom, one-bathroom unit with a functioning kitchen and great space. The updated house hippo demonstrates a further refinement in form and function. The elevations demonstrate a balance between buoyancy and stability while maximizing available living space inside and outside the home. The rooftop generates picturesque islands of inhabitation for residents to enjoy in both seasons, and the static stilts were substituted for retractable rotator cuff mounted legs to enable greater mobility in water. Expanding my scope, I designed the first in a series of plug-in extensions to be marketed for this future catalog home. The result, a floating A-frame, offers alternative materiality and aesthetic variability to the scheme. Over years of inhabitation, the home is permitted to grow and evolve with the occupant, their lifestyle, and their unique needs. The result manifests as an expansive lakefront commune achieved through holistic ad hoc growth rather than broad stroke master planning. In enhancing and furthering the narrative drive behind my speculative canal commune, I began to reimagine the manufactured production of the house hippo through the lens of a birth. A temple-like structure, both functional and monumental, was designed to accommodate and celebrate the production of these homes. Taking cues from regional typologies, such as the boathouse, found in many lakeside communities such as Muskoka, and the chateau-style roof, emblematic of the Canadian national style, the structure remixes old Canadian symbols in a playful and postmodern interpretation. Through various plan, elevation, and axonometric drawings, the temple and its component parts can be observed in full as the joyfully absurd aggrandizement of mundane processes. The film, first explored through a sketch animatic, would begin to explore the narrative of this Canadian commune and its inhabitants between the 2067 Expo and the year of 2072 established in the unit brief. The characters, rendered in small-scale claymation, would attempt to bridge the gap between the expansive world of rendering with the miniature models created in my body of work. In so doing, the film follows one protagonist's pursuit of the Canadian dream in the wake of the 2067 Toronto Expo. And with that, I would like to present to you the final film, Ontario Archipelago.
seen from the Apollo missions a century ago was revealed as a fragile blue marble in the abyss. In honor of this triumph, the first Canadian Expo of the 21st century centers on the aquatic, our big blue world. Attracting more than 600,000 visitors on the opening of its bicentennial, Expo 67 has shown Canada's market return to the world stage. The architect, as pictured, prepares his models for presentation. Exhibit A, Fetal Canada. The first Canadian pavilion is a landscape of Canada's past. Each impression in the landscape is revealed. From our winding rivers and picturesque lakes, our communities have centered around water. Exhibit B, the Oriel Tower. A popular site among tourists, it examines Canada's architectural typologies and pop cultures. Exhibit C. The House Hippo has reimagined Canada's domestic sphere for the 21st century. Removed from the land, these water walkers create islands of inhabitation. But here, in the beautiful lakeside communities of the archipelago, summer and winter can be enjoyed in perfect parody. But that's not all. Take a close look at the structure's ports and just like that, Presto Changer. Your home can accommodate infinitely diverse add-ons and features.